Okay. Do you have audio? Well, yeah. Back. All right. You're going to kill it back. Hmm. I suppose you think you're going to shoot one of those things up in the air and hope that by some stroke of luck, one of those going bats will just. Cheese. My dead grandmother, they will. Bats don't bump into anything. There's only one way to bring one of those old fellows down. Stay right there. I guess somebody died. Oh? Yeah. His old man. So long, Wendy girl. Must be awfully difficult to hit one of them. Ah, uh, like taking candy from a baby. Wow, did you see that? No. What's the matter with you boys shooting that thing off? Haven't you got any sense in your hands? Get out of here, all of you. Scoop! You better come down here, Cornelia. I said it got a shot of hippopotamus and it's lying in your panty bed. Oh, Frederick, are you home? Come upstairs. You don't know what's happened. Oh, I love the I love the grandfather there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's a scene where uh, for the for the listeners uh, the uh, that the the two little kids are they're you know they they got some bows and arrows. It looks like they're going to shoot some bats that are flying around the trees. And um, the John T. character, uh, played by our, our guest here, um, you know, pulls out a rifle and shoots one of them. <laughs> yeah. And then the the father, I think, so I guess, uh, you know, is, um, everybody's kind of living in this house, I took it, right? Is that? Yeah, sort of multi-generational. Yeah, and the father, I think, is a town doctor or something like yeah. that, comes up and he he pulls up um, and uh, after, maybe, the, it must be the end of the day if there's bats flying around, but, you know, um, uh, I thought, I just picked this, I thought it was a funny scene. It was a cute, like, you know, so there's so many scenes in this movie that are sort of like slice of life kind of just they don't it's not really there to like as far as i could tell that advance the plot necessarily but it's just kind of like a scene in like what they're doing you know yeah there's a lot of those there's a, that's that's kind of why i liked it because it it doesn't it didn't have not every every not every scene was was like moving the plot along which actually is really what you want in a screenplay you really want things to be really tight and moving on and moving on moving sure. on <clears throat> but <clears throat> when you do a lot of those you kind of appreciate things that breathe a little bit <clears throat> well i think i don't i don't know i you know i can't say i've seen that many like you know recent movies but it kind of seems like a lot of films like the films from that i certainly grew up with like in the 80s and 70s or whatever they took their time more yeah and it does seem like you know uh, there's more of a faster like a faster pace with things i don't know if you get that sense as well but yeah well, I think they've gotten that better. They actually can make sort of mm, not action movies, but they, they can still sort of move them along quicker now because mm -hmm. they're, it's a little less novelistic and more, um, I don't know, they, 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 there's been sort of improvements in screenwriting. Right. Sort of, you know, it's kind of like high jump, you know, it's like you've yeah. got to jump over this thing and then the next guy tries to make it higher and the next guy tries to make it higher. And then, you know, as, as screenwriting sort of develops, they, they find a way to maybe tighten things up and sure. move them along faster, even if it's about a small, uh, a small scope. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, this, this next one is, um, let's see, this was the one I, I was referring to before. This is uh, just a few minutes after this. This is the point where I think you guys are in a garage. Yeah. What's this in Kyle? Like you. Well, if he got shot to pieces, will we be twins? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would start a scrapbook about the war. I wanted to be prepared to know everything, especially about the enemy. They might invade at any time. What you got going over there? A war scrapbook. Right here in the war. Because I got my leg busted up in four places, that's why. None of the services considered me fit enough for action. How'd it happen? See that? 
me and my best buddy Duffy Taylor, we got this brilliant idea to build an aerial car. We hung it from the roof up there and ran a cable to the house. Powered it with this old engine I pulled out of a 28 Ford. It worked too. I mean, I was riding the thing once and Duffy pushed the gear shift forward when he was supposed to pull it back and uh, splat, unfit for duty. Did you still join the war effort? Yeah, push a pencil when guys are dying. Forget it. Duffy, though, he joined the Air Corps right out of high school. Valedictorian, college scholarships, most valuable player. Hell, he was a pitcher on the All-State baseball team. You name it, he had it. He checked it all, joined the Air Corps. What front does he fight on? He, uh, he was killed. Oh. Where did it happen? It was a bombing raid over Morocco, November 1942. Have you ever touched a dead person? <laughs> That's your morbid little kid. Forget it. I was just asking. this is obviously I do. what you don't know used to belong to your dad here why don't you hold on to it before when i used to think about death it was like thinking about how far away a star is or about how many people are right this minute standing on top of the empire state building things were different now blood and guts every time they flipped open a magazine Okay, well, on that note, <laughs> yeah, whoa, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a, again, like it's such a, a neat little scene there. Um, I mean, it totally went over my head when I was watching it as a kid, but uh, um, I, I don't know what your your thoughts were as you kind of rewatched the scene. And well, it's uh, you, you know, you, you, we try to say a lot in in a in a small scene, you, know, you try to yeah. tell the whole story. Like that's my whole deal is that, you know, my character was uh, so kind of uh, stymied and kind of, you know, he felt like a non-person because all young guys that weren't fighting in the war felt that way. Mm -hmm. If they couldn't be in the war, they were like, what the hell am I doing? Right. You know, not in the war. Right. Very few conscientious objectors. Right. And, uh, everybody wanted to be in the war and if you weren't in the war people looked at you like what the hell's wrong with you right and uh and so he just sort of that's his kind of his big you know his sort of his big drama his big tragedy his big kind of you know problem in the, in the script because his, his he has a gimpy leg and and uh they won't and they, he otherwise he would otherwise be a great great soldier but right sure yeah and it is Sorry. Oh, no, no, it's interesting. Like, you, you know, um, uh, and I missed this when I watched it initially. It's kind of like, you know, he's talking about his friend, Duffy. He's talking about like, you know, he had all these things going for him. And, uh, and then he chucked it all by joining the Air Corps, you know, it's sort of like, yeah. almost like a, almost like an anti-war sentiment, you know, kind of. It, it is, was, it almost, is. Almost a little unusual. Yeah, right? It is unusual because the, 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 the Yeah, it is. It is funny. You, I guess you could tell it was written by somebody that maybe didn't have the same view about war that um, you know that that, that he had. It, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. I know. I know. I know. John was born in the '40s, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. and he might. It might have been. He may have written that book uh, sort of during a, the '60s. Sometime I can't remember. When in the '60s it came out, I mean, it was the '60s, maybe it was 1970. I don't know, but yeah. it, it, there, there definitely was a the very different feeling about the war, yeah. obviously World War II and, and Vietnam. So, yeah, um, I, I just I thought it was kind of just interesting for the the character who's like, well, I can't go, you know, and I see the effects that the war has, you know, so on my friend, you know, and 
So what did that really accomplish him? He had all these things going for him and he, you know, he's, yeah. you know, he chucked it all away, you know, as he put it, you know, and what, what did that really mean in the grand scheme of things? So I don't know. I thought it was an interesting kind of, you know, kind of take on the, the way they kind of wrote the character, the, you know, the script or whatever. And then when you see what happens to him, you realize he was this sort of sort of phenomenal kind of very special and especially bright person that this right. happens to. And, you know, it just, it sort of builds up like what he was, you know, he was the all American boy. He was the, right. you know, yeah. everything. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of an old um, sort of convention to, to, to do that. You know, something terrible happens to somebody and, you know, he was the greatest guy in the world. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I thought it was interesting. It did. Um, I was wondering if there was more uh, that backstory you had on the Wendell's father. We don't really hear a lot about him kind of uh, sort of uh, through family members, really. Um, yeah. It's sort of this like really distant kind of mystery. I mean, you see him, he's grieving. Yeah. His life, and then he goes off and, you know, deals with other joining the the military or whatever but uh and then and then is absent for really the rest of the picture until the very end but i was wondering if there was more a more story that you guys kind of had created or knew about for the for for him um there there was it, it, it's in the motorcycle scene it's it's kind of a we talk oh, about okay the mom and the That's kid yeah uh, we talk about his mom and, and and how she kind of didn't really fit kind of didn't really fit in the family it seemed yeah and that's why why maybe why one of the reasons that he kind of got one of the reasons that he sort of had this somewhat dysfunctional life is that he married this woman who was not kind of older material whatever mm, <laughs> you know yeah and and uh what was their last name um and it, you know, there's sort of this feeling that 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 he kind of kind of went away from the family. Yeah. Kind of, kind of took because there he's, he's out in Los Angeles. You know, it's, people right. from New England don't move to Los Angeles. Yeah. Right. Generally. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, that, that'll be that'll be kind of an uh, interesting thing to talk about with that one. So I thought the 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 next one we could do is that uh, the 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 Fourth of July and skunk one. That's a that's a fun. Uh, oh yeah. That's a fun one. Um, all right, so that's like 50, I think it's like 53. We're going by a couple of the other scenes here. I have to say though, um, the uh, the Sybil character, the one that Leah Thompson did, that it seems to me like that would be an incredibly, like it would be a very hard role to kind of play. Cause she had to like, you know, she's sort of like in a sort of way the character is kind of tragic and you know, and, and no matter how you played it, it would be hard to, you know, uh, I mean, you kind of just highlight that, like the few options that women kind of had at the, at the time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, and uh, it, it was pretty, the sort of the unwed mother thing was a, was a thing that definitely happened. They didn't talk about it all the time, but I'm yeah. sure you know, it happened a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is a, uh, see if I get this right. So she, so she's the, so she plays your sister, right? Yeah. In the, and is, I don't know, was it a younger sister or was it older? Or? I can't I really know. remember, but I think yeah. it's, I think it's my younger sister. Or, yeah. or I can't remember what it is in the book. Right, but both living, both living in the same household. Yeah. Um, and she has a, a child who's the, the little, the little boy, um, uh, sort of, whose father is off in the war and later gets killed. And then, but we later find that the father is actually not from that one, but, right. um, but yeah, I mean, you kind of, you know, her, she's sort of surrounded by death as well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the idea that she, you know, that she has a, she does have a scene with him that's very sort of tender, but you also think that, you know, they have this kind of romance that can only really happen in high school or, you know, when you're very young and right. very, you know, so it's, it's even though she's 23 or 24, whatever she is, you know, she's, she obviously has a strong feeling for him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, all right. So this, this, I mean, we'll come back to that one. 
this is the part where it's sort of happier times in a way. This is yeah. the, around 4th of July and your character is sneaking into the kid's room with a surprise. The little guy's boxing gloves on. <laughs> what day is today? It's the Fourth of July, right, boys? Sort of raising hell and throwing the firecrackers all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> I love these two. Guys, I think that the Germans landed right here in the lawn. But it wouldn't be right, boys, to leave a job unfinished. All right, Michelle. Real firecrackers. Were they? <laughs> Those four year olds are real firecrackers. <laughs> uh oh. And so Wendell hides underneath the porch where uh, he has a friend there. Uh oh. A very stinky one. <laughs> It's sprayed by a skunk. Oh, no, what a skunk! Skunk! Could that be what I smelled? Daddy, what are we gonna do? Use the fertilizer? Nah, I just leave out here to stink the What am I gonna do? I don't want to stink one minute more! I hate all the bastard skunks everywhere! There's no need to spray it, young man. This stuff is crazy, that's what it is. Just wait. Watch this. We're trying to get it out of there. Slowly, slowly, that's the way. So, so was this a real skunk? Yeah. I just know that Don animals would have spurred him. If only the people of this family weren't such fools. We froze. Got it! We froze Now, what the devil do you plan to do with it? I'm going to give it to Wendell. No, I, I don't want it. Let's put them in the bathtub and squirt eau de cologne up his bottom with a chicken baster. What do you say? Okay, well, this is the part where they've got the skunk and they're gonna like, I don't know, stick it in someone's basement or something like that. Three, pop her in, and you shut that door faster than you ever shut anything before. Okay? Oh. All right. One, two. Oh. <laughs> damn! 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 I'll get sprayed. I'm gonna cross a bridge here. So this is the middle of winter, huh? Middle of winter, I'm taking off my shirt. Wow, jeez. Uh, I wonder if that would have been like, uh, I'm trying to think of the geography, would it be like Link Champlain or something like a tributary off of that or something like that? Uh, let's see. What is that? I don't know if it was Lake Champlain. I'm not sure. We had a 
there was a kind of a sizable body of water on the way up the mountain. Yeah. There was a big pond. We were going to use that for the skating scene, but it wouldn't freeze over. Yeah. We had to kind of make our own pond. Um, I can't remember. Yeah. I can't remember where it was exactly. It wasn't really the, I shouldn't say the middle of winter. It's going to, going to sound like a wimp here. It was actually just in, probably in November or October. Mm, still kind of, it cold. It's still cold. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty cold to take your shirt off and pretend like you're hot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, it's, again, it's like a, one of these like fun little scenes where it's like, you know, it's kind of funny because like when you, when you, it's almost like when you remember, like when I think of my own childhood, like I think of like, it, it comes back in little like slices, like little like encapsulated pieces, like little pictures, almost like, and it's almost like that's the way the movie was kind of done. It was like yeah. little parts of like, you know, you know, um, your life. They're not necessarily always interconnected, but they're just like things you do, you know. It's more like a book on film, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. It's, this, this particular story, it's more like a memoir on film. Right, sure. And uh, they let it breathe a little bit. And it's sort of, you know, that, that was kind of the style for a while. And, and uh, yeah. So yeah, it was, it, it, and it's hard with this. I like the motorcycle scene. Um, uh, and I was like a big motorcycle freak. I especially love British motorcycles. And this was a cool old 38 Reg Whitworth. Mm. Yeah, so why don't we go to that one? This is, uh, this is a scene where your character is riding a motorcycle. It's so it's supposed to be autumn at the time. So, well, yeah. so I guess, did you guys, uh, I guess it would fit if there was sort of, you were doing that all the time. Um, did you guys film this thing in order? Like, it, was it sort of like sequential or is it kind of like all, yeah? No, you can't. I, mean, I think this is one of the first films, first scenes we ever shot. Cause we got there, like, I think right at the height of the color. I can't, I can't remember, but um, it was one of the first scenes we shot. Yeah, yeah totally. And that's why they were like, oh yeah, we shoot the baseball scene. Oh, guess we had to bank it till, you know, <laughs> where there's three foot of snow on the ground. But yeah, this was one of the first ones we shot. We got there, we got all the really good, the color, you know, we, we planned it out so we could get the best fall color scenes. Right. You know, but no, you never shoot a movie in, in, in order. Yeah. Um, I mean, some people do, they have, but but it's really hard to shoot a small budget movie. In, in I'll bet, order. I'll bet. Yeah, so this is, uh, let's start this one here. Um, <laughs> what are you doing? Just cutting up a little. Never, I. You sure? I'm not afraid if that's what you mean. Hop on. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah. Don't mind if I get to go over here. I turn your head to the side. Why don't you touch me? <laughs> Are you going to marry our cell? Well, I may have to. She won't let me touch her otherwise. But you don't think you want to? No. Thinking's got nothing to do with it. It's a mysterious and terrible power that women wield. <laughs> Sex. Offering him a beer here. It takes a sip of beer. Do you ever know my mother? Freddie brought her by. No, your daddy was not immune. 
Yeah. Sometimes people aren't always as perfect as we'd like them to be. That was a nice, uh, you know, he gets to kind of have one of those uh, man-to-man conversations that right. he probably didn't, that it didn't sound like he had that with his, his father. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's definitely a kid that kind of, he, it seems as though he was sort of forced to grow up a little little too fast and he really, yeah. so he really didn't. Yeah. You know, that's why he gets, gets a chance to, he kind of gets a chance to sort of be new baptized, as they say. Yeah. Yeah, and be be a kid, you know, throw firecrackers and yeah. you know have fun and do those kinds of things like that. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, because uh, he has a he has a bit of an an arc, right? You kind of see him um, as the film kind of goes on. He gets a little bit less uptight. Oh yeah, you know, that's that's you know? kind of that's really the only <laughs> kind of dynamic in the film, really, because it's because right. it's all him. It's all his his development and his breaking down and his kind of warming up to things. Everybody else is sort of episodic. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and you, you kind of get in this, this scene, I mean, uh, you know, for the listeners, I mean, if you've ever, if you, if you haven't lived in New England, I'm trying to think, I mean, you just picture like a fall day where there's lots of colors and stuff like that. And you're kind of driving past, I don't know, this is a thing that people do in New England, leaf peeping, you know, you go out and, you know, it's, October, November, when the leaves are changing, and you you, you go drive around and you look at the <laughs> yeah, the colors um, it's like better than any movie. I mean, you drive yeah. around the countryside in New England at that time of year. It's just, it's like you know, it's like when Dorothy opens the opens the door in the Wizard of Oz. You know, right. especially yeah. you know from California, there's really not a lot of color in California. Right. Um, but yeah i've done also there's also in north carolina in the, in the mountains like bluish mountains mm, sure that's yeah. also got some fantastic color i did a almost did a movie there around the same time yeah yeah uh, yeah so that's that's what they're doing when they're you know riding the motorcycle kind of through those uh yeah. little dirt trail i mean there's so many great places to and there's not I'm trying to think driving through there is not a lot there i mean but there's a lot of great stuff to see in terms of if you like nature and that kind I, of I love it i mean like vermont yeah. is like vermont is my second favorite state yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah was your fir- first favorite California. Oh, okay yeah <laughs> that makes sense yeah sure but i have to say i mean i you know i go to vermont vermont or like western north carolina yeah yeah sure absolutely um this next scene is 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 also a baseball scene, but it's uh, um, not quite the one you're referring to. But it's more of like the kind of like uh, not father son, but like almost like older brother yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, let's see, a minute and thirteen, I think, uh, something like this. Yes, uh, somewhere around here. That's a good luck glove you got. A lot right. of history in that leather. You rub it in real good and come back to life. It's like all the stuff they stuck in this store. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, I know. Wood burning stove and uh, actually, even even to get like the because I mean the gloves looked a bit different, you know, then and you know just to to find one of those. Yeah. Well, that, I remember having gloves like that. I mean, you know, I had like my dad's old gloves. And yeah. Just... It's not going to just plop into your glove. You got to. Connect with it while it's still in the air. All right, give it here. That's better, but you're too tight. And even if you did catch the darn thing, it'd probably bounce right out. Let me try it again. (laughs) Ready? And it uh, hits him in the face. <laughs> You'll get it. <laughs> what a tough love in this relationship. <laughs> yeah, but it, yeah, it's it's uh, you can kind of see like he, uh, it's like a totally, it's like learning a, like a foreign language or something like that for him. You know, it's it's yeah, it's nice that because uh, I mean, if you think about it, like what the character was probably like twelve or something like that, and the yeah. John D character was like at least double his age. I'm guessing, yeah. probably, right? He didn't have to spend any time at all with this kid. 
but um, he did make an effort to try to like introduce him to a few things, you know, like take him riding and, you know, help helping a youngster get shit faced. I mean, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like guys have a sort of an instinct about that, you know, yeah. they, they just kind of, yeah. they see, they see like if a kid is, you know, having trouble with something and they just, they like remember what somebody did for them. And so right. they, they just kind of recreate that. That's just sort of this, yeah, it's kind of like a animal instinct almost, you know? Right. Right. You kind of sense that, you know, he doesn't have a father and a father yeah. mother really. And so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, then, uh, th this was, a this was a, 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 like sort of a, um, this next scene, I thought this was a part where, uh, it, again, it kind of reminded me of a, like a darker Christmas story, but this is, it's a sort of a weird scene in some way. He gets these rabbits. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what happened to him with the, they ate the babies or something. There was something weird that went on with that. Yeah. Ouch. Um, but he kind of loses it. Uh, and, uh, let's see. Uh, there's, this is happening, I think, around Christmas, which is, I think, why it reminded me of the Christmas story. Yeah. Yeah, right around here. You're kind of seeing the family singing around the piano, and uh, he's looking at it uh, from outside, actually. I am the wizard. Tails by this kid who's making fun of him. Hi, Wendy girl. What's the matter? Did the boyfriend break up with you? Huh? 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 This is where he gets his moment to beat the snot out of this kid. Starts getting his looks in. <laughs> Say my name. <laughs> and then he sort of apologizes, like, you know, helps him pick up his bike and. You know. The kid was played by the, uh, the kid that was the young Josh in uh, Big. Remember him? Remember that movie? Oh Big? yeah! Wow. Yeah, I guess young Josh. Josh. Really? Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's a David that's, Moscow. I think his name yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Oh, good. Wow. That's that's an interesting connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, one one thing I, I uh, <laughs> uh, but the, you know, I, I I wonder like you know. If they would have, uh, you know, so sometimes when they, I think when they, they, uh, they make stuff, I don't know, I guess, I guess, I don't think this is necessarily intended for kids necessarily, but they, when they make stuff for kids, I get the impression that they sometimes will censor it a little bit uh, to try to prevent, you know, the, to, to show certain things. Like, and I wonder, like, if they would have filmed this particular scene where the, the kid is, like, losing it on the other kid, um, you know, in that way, uh, to not, you know, promote violence or whatever. But uh, I have to say, like, uh, the bully probably won't bother him after this. That's the thing. I mean, that's yeah. that's kind of the the lesson there. You know, it's as hard as yeah. it is to, to like have to like physically engage with somebody that that's constantly trying to do that. If you want to put a stop to it, that's that's what you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, sadly, it's this weird sort of <laughs> ritual these guys go through. Right, but, right. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. That kind of is the. I know you're in New England. There's a great uh, Dennis Leary has this great uh, story about 
you know, the bully that he had to yeah. sort of beat up that he was like scared shitless of. And yeah. And uh, it's a pretty funny story. Yeah. Well, I think we all, we all have stories like that. Right. I mean, you know, yeah. in some level. Right. Um, the one thing I was going to say, like uh, you hear little uh, patches of it here and there, but I, one thing I remember being struck by at the time, but also like totally forgetting about and then re remembering was the score of this film um yeah the music of it is really uh i really actually liked it but i i um i remember hearing it initially and then i would hear snippets of it like when i you know in memories of it but i never really knew where it came from afterwards and i thought we'd just uh in the beginning um yeah it was pretty good michelle i think michelle columbard i think is his name yeah this is the the sort of the opening sequence or whatever Is that, is that an, like an oboe or something like that? I mean, it... yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, I wasn't there. <laughs> and then it, it changes to sort of a piano at some points. Um, and uh, where they, they keep the same kind of overall melody and um, they, uh, but it's done in, in a piano for different scenes or sort of variations of it. Mm -hmm. 